Okay, hi everyone. Um, so I'm very uh, uh, glad to be joining, even though it's uh, virtually. I uh, thank uh, OWASP uh, very much for allowing this um, due to my inability to come in person. And I'm gonna speak about my, about uh, uh, supply chain and why it deserves a dedicated IR plan. This is part of a research that uh, um, me and my team did initially at uh, Enzo and then later as part of SNIC. So uh, um, myself, I'm uh, Omer, uh, a, security, a senior security engineer at SNIC uh, product strategy. Uh, prior to that, I was the head of research at uh, Enzo Security, which was acquired by SNIC a few months back. Um, I previously I worked at uh, large companies for uh, a cloud computing uh, environment and uh, before that I was also a, a incident and re a response digital forensics um, uh, at uh, Israel uh, National Cyber uh, Directorate so there I was uh, kind of uh, had a chance to see also um, in person um, nation and state uh, recording in progress nation and state actors um, um, campaigns. <clears throat> so um, talking about a bit about our agenda, uh, um, basically I'm going to explain how a bit about supply chain attack vector, what's the risk, how it looks like in uh, uh, when it comes to uh, incident response, uh, how things have changed, and um, basically what's our predictions and what you can take away with uh, uh, from that and uh, hopefully uh, to have a, a, some kind of sense of what your IR is going to look like for the cases of um, different um, incident related to supply chain threats. So um, a bit about uh, how did we get here, and uh, I'm sure that everyone today is kind of familiar with the space of, uh, um, in this way or another, of uh, application security and, uh, and the risks of uh, uh, open source and, uh, and um, basically dependencies in our code. So historically, uh, I'd say about, uh, if you look 10 years ago, and you would have uh, kind of uh, taken uh, the different uh, domains inside security. There would have been application security, which is to protect a deployed application, uh, waterfall, secure, the, uh, um, secure uh, development life cycle. So in each uh, part of the development, there's security kind of uh, guidelines and security uh, controls. And then you end up with a... a uh, an application which is which has been kind of tested within a, a, every state and the IT security domain which was mainly for uh, uh, responsible for any incident response in, in workstations like EDR tools or, or you know antiviruses tool in the past and the uh, server station uh, incident response so again uh, anything to do with uh, uh, taking memory dumps uh, uh, and uh, investigating or um, uh, checking logs uh, and so on would have been uh, IT security and all of the issues of, uh, uh, of third party updates um, across the organization. So <clears throat> in the terms of the uh, application security, any risks for supply chain would have been uh, mitigated by having a static uh, bill of material. Something would have uh, been uh, uh, flagged as a dependency if something were to arise, right? Some, uh, um, some kind of a vulnerability or anything other, I would go and check my bill of material and see if it's there, I might need to update and so on. So uh, this is historically and uh, uh, from there to now there was a big uh, shift, a shift to the uh, left and a lot of the, um, of the domains that were IT security like um, infrastructure and um, and uh, all of the deployments and, and uh, servers have uh, come to be controlled by code and the uh, applicative handlers and the IAC and the dev, uh, DevOps have become the domain uh, owners. And so <clears throat> in terms of application security, um, there is a change in trying to uh, continuously 
uh, protect a changing application. So all of the time uh, you test it and you uh, maybe even reject certain builds um, as part of the CI CD pipelines. And of course, that's also became part of the um, domain that you need to protect. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, a bit about the challenges for this kind of new uh, domains and new um, capabilities that it uh, uh, requires from application security personnel. So first of all, uh, uh, the software bill of material. So uh, uh, this is again one of a, a very um, aged and, and very formulated um, um, idea and concept. There are even tools, uh, pretty good tools to uh, build um, static uh, um, software bill of materials. One of them is, is uh, Cyclone DX, which is also um, <clears throat> a flagship project of OSWASP and it's very well maintained and it has a lot of frameworks for every kind of uh, language uh, and technology you think of. Um, so we had all of that <clears throat> and we can see I put a bit of uh, uh, over uh, uh, Google Trends uh, uh, a timeline of a few incidents relating to SBOM and, and the search term of uh, SBOM over time. So uh, the first time that I uh, uh, encountered it was in an ESLint scope incident, which was um, an incident uh, that basically was uh, uh, in NPM, a very well uh, uh, known uh, ESLint a very well-known, very uh, popular downloaded um, package, um, sub-package, basically, dependency called the S-Lint scope was uh, hijacked and um, basically one ma um, maintainer uh, credentials were um, obtained by a malicious actor and then he uh, entered, uh, inserted malicious code which exfiltrated the NPM RC file um, to paste bin, if I'm not mistaken. And so that was the first time that I was kind of, uh, okay, what do we do in this uh, scenario? I'm jumping a bit uh, later, and then in February 2021, there was a, a dependency confusion article um, public publication. Uh, it uh, basically showed how uh, in a dependency confusion, uh, 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 a situation where um, public dependency takes precedence over internal dependencies uh, in a case where the attacker can guess or can know the internal uh, dependency name, he can uh, confuse the CI CD pipeline into uh, or the workstation of the developer to, to um, get, take, fetch his own code. And, uh, and basically, this in that article. Um, the, publi the publication was also about uh, um, being able to uh, manipulate code and uh, breach a list of uh, like 30, over 30 top, uh, um, top uh, um, firms like uh, Apple, Google, uh, basically you name it. So it was uh, um, very clear that that was a big um, a big uh, surface and a big risk um, regarding the supply chain um, space. Um, not uh, much later, in re uh, um, a bit after the um, um, the log4j, uh, not the log4j, the um, um, solar wind uh, um, incident. So Biden's executive order specifically. Uh, detailed the usage of SBOM for certain uh, fields um, and required for certain uh, uh, federal uh, um, um, requirements. And then on uh, December uh, 21, uh, the Log4J, Log4J, uh, uh, also in famous vulnerability that was uh, um, very quickly uh, used in the wild by attackers. So again, uh, um, um, a bit of context of how, how the term came to kind of uh, into our life. And <clears throat> so basically when we say, okay, we have the tools, we know we should know uh, what to look for. So why in the case of Log4j, people were uh, 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 looking around and couldn't find um, clear answers. So here is an example of how SBOM sometimes fails. 
Um, this is from uh, uh, the CDX Gen uh, Index.js uh, file. So this is a, a, a quick snippet of how it creates uh, Python bomb files. And uh, it looks for, in this case, it looks for uh, file names by poetry.lock or any uh, requirements txt or any folder with uh, named requirements and the txt file internally. However, uh, when you look at the pip uh, documentation, you see that the requirements uh, file format is not a, um, it's just a um, it's not a requirement to have the, that specific name as as a Python bomb uh, create a function uh, is looking for, but uh, it can it's just a um, convention and uh, in fact we did see um, many uh, users that use. Um, requirements txt not in that format but requirements dash you know hyphen uh, um, qa dot txt uh, dash uh, prod dot txt and so on so you know that um, and then ci picks up uh, the right internal so in those cases uh, it would be failed this is just an example obviously uh, all of those um, um, mechanisms work on file system and then they are limited to the file names and they can't you know go over content-based search for uh, all of that that's just the way these tools kind of work um, so this is uh, one thing to notice and then we uh, started to ask what are all of the different uh, um, other notions that are missing from an, uh, a modern uh, web application SBOM what is uh, uh, you know, where are the controllers, what are the CI-CD data, where you, all of that data is kind of, uh, um, you know, when you run uh, uh, those um, SBOM tools, they won't uh, provide that kind of information. They would only provide a list of, uh, of dependencies uh, that uh, were uh, uh, related to the to the program and not a lot of context that is related to that project. Um, okay, so um, <clears throat> from the attacker perspective, also very important that uh, uh, basically uh, this is a uh, the fastest uh, growing attack surface and not and it's uh, clear that it uh, with good reasons for uh, attackers. First of all, a lot of public uh, data to harvest. So if we take, for instance, uh, NPM, for example, uh, it's quite easy for attackers to um, take this huge space and see what are the most downloaded packages, uh, what of the most downloaded packages has the most maintainers, what of those packages has a uh, Git repo that doesn't verify uh, Git commits, and so on. So a lot of... Uh, a lot of these questions are public, publicly answered, and and that makes it uh, a very makes the life of a hacker really fun because he can he has a lot to harvest, um, and then there is a lot of uh, a great return on, on investment for attackers. A single right breach for an owner or a single um, mistyped. Uh, right, it's quite a uh, type squatting kind of uh, or um, uh, just typing something or, or a dependency confusion any kind of attack that would uh, succeed someone would install it and that's a great ROI uh, for the attacker because he has a, um, the, the same credentials that the uh, user or a role who ran that uh, application in uh, head as part of the CI or as part of uh, build or as part of production. So, um, um, add to that that there are little security controls for uh, malicious packages in public repositories. So, it is getting better, and we see, uh, for instance, NPM requiring a certain um, um, users to add uh, uh, with certain. Um, downloads, weekly downloads to add to factor authentication and, uh, and stuff like that that we would have, uh, you know, think uh, um, they are very uh, unlikely in the past, so they are happening, but still today we can see that there are, it's very easy to publish any code um, and it's still very uh, common for uh, uh, attackers to use 
um, public registries. I talk about NPM JS, but there's obviously um, more um, for different technologies. Um, okay, so a bit about uh, the risks and IR and where OWASP and where we should as security experts kind of uh, uh, see ourselves in all of this um, area. So when we look about, uh, when we look at OWASP top 10 risks and we think uh, where is supply chain risks, so it's very hard to find like a direct uh, um, reference to it. Uh, if I'll uh, uh, try and look uh, deep, I would say that using components with known vulnerabilities might fit. Again, that, that, that's not the entire use like space, um, but it's part of it. And also insufficient logging and monitoring. So again, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit in, the, in that realm of uh, did I or did I not um, build this package during the time that it was vulnerable and uh, malicious and the response from the uh, repository wouldn't bring malicious code. So again, this is one of the big kind of uh, uh, questions that, that we, requ we are required to answer. So I put it here, but if you, uh, if you think like uh, there's a segment about uh, prediction, but I can clearly say now that, you know, every four years there's a a new list, so I'm guessing that in 2024 I predict, you know, that it would be one of the categories and probably um, pretty high up um, regarding um, uh, some sort of a supply chain attack. Um, okay, so, um, <clears throat> so again, we can see that a few years back, you know, it wasn't really, a, a, it, it wasn't quite um, even a uh, potential risk, and today we, we think that every um, organization should consider um, its plans for uh, supply chain attacks. So um, <clears throat> when we talk about the threats, we need to cl be clear about a few different types of packages or dependencies. So there is a malicious uh, public package, a malicious there was a malicious code that was uh, born malicious, meaning if I see that uh, name of a package inside my one of my builds, that means that a malicious code was um, ran by my CI pipelines. Okay, and there's another uh, um, kind of example uh, or type of a malicious package, which is a rogue. I call it a rogue public package. This is the example of VSLint, a, a code that was at one time uh, harmless and legitimate uh, for legitimate reasons and uh, at one point was hijacked and was injected with malicious code and then it might be you know um, un, uh, you know cleared or uh, or uh, bumped or uh, uh, whatever but uh, at one point it was uh, it turned malicious from non malicious and then there is a dependency confusion. Uh, again, a dependency confusion, so this is when someone can uh, guess or know the internal packages names and then um, if the, at, some po uh, at some point um, it is the, the pipeline is referred to that uh, same name, it would prefer uh, the public package owned by the, the malicious sector in favor of the internal package. So that uh, also poses, you know, you can understand that this is a, a bit of different uh, game. It also means that it's usually a targeted attack, like, you know, um, listing a lot of uh, um, public um, uh, dependencies, but adding a prefix of some company like, I know, the name of the company, dash, and then hope to hit like a, a, an internal uh, um, an internal fork or something like that. Um, um, or uh, obviously like uh, some, sometimes when you scrape the, this is how it was in the, uh, in the, internal, in the original uh, um, publication, he scraped the public pages for pack packages, package JSONs and found um, exposing in internal uh, names. 
So uh, either way, uh, dependency confusion is a uh, dedicated, mostly dedicated, um, and it also bear meanings. Uh, other than that, there is just a vulnerable package. When you talk about a vulnerable package by itself, it's it's no indication for a breach. It's that almost every um, project has some kind of vulnerabilities found within within internal and dependency packages. Um, and that by itself, it's not a clear indication for uh, for something very um, malicious. It's just a, um, a signal for a, a lower risk uh, for you know for, uh, for that specific application, lower risk. Um, a non-malicious uh, package was found to have a vulnerability. Okay, so this is like the example of the log for shell. Again, log for shell is. Uh, it's a unique, uh, uh, a bit example because it's also a very high um, criticality, and also it was known to be uh, uh, in the wild, exploited in the wild. So uh, you know, but still, in terms that was just a vulnerable package um, that you want to know if you are vulnerable for. And so all of those three kind of main um, scenarios when you um, potentially then code which is malicious inside CI or a works, uh, developer station, these are uh, in fact breaches and as breaches they should be dealt as breaches, meaning incident respond uh, should uh, have action items and you should check for uh, um, uh, logs for any type of uh, uh, assets that relate to that environment, to the environment which was uh, it was running. And uh, uh, so many times we, like, I, I see people that kind of, um, okay, this um, um, version was, was uh, um, a malicious, uh, added malicious code, we update it. Okay, so updating is not, we update, it's great, but it's not, uh, you see the... Um, code still ran inside CI, inside uh, um, a developer uh, station, and it's considered you should treat it as a breach until you validate that it was the code was not run. Um, okay, so uh, if we look at what is uh, uh, at stake, um, <clears throat> so in terms of uh, incident response, uh, there is a, 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 an initial uh, triage. The, um, the trash verdict usually um, it's uh, easy to uh, kind of validate, it's hard to exonerate. So we need to see uh, usually when we talk about, um, for instance, uh, uh, a malicious package which had uh, uh, some uh, uh, short lived because it was uh, found to be malicious. So we need to construct a, a timeline to understand, and we need to see that we have the tools to do so. A timeline to understand within CI, uh, did this during the time that is considered um, maliciously uh, available, whether it was built or not built. So that should be a quick verdict that we should, uh, um, that security should have. Um, because a lot of the time what we see is, is security dependent on R&D, and these are the kind of um, value that uh, security, um, application security should bring, and not um, should uh, uh, you know, run after R&D, um, because they can't validate the, they, they don't, they lack the understanding of just those kind of uh, important notes. So for instance, uh, R&D at uh, one point in some incident, they, um, <clears throat> they said we checked our logs and there was, a, a, there was like a, we're, we're good and the, the um, script that was run, it, it ran uh, like non-successfully, so we're okay. Like the test failed it. And so, no, this is a very bad interpretation because if a, a build was failed, it still uh, might be because of the um, internal uh, package, right? The, the malicious package failing to do what it's supposed to do, and, but still running the malicious code um, as part of a pre-script uh, and so on. 
Yes. Um, so this is where security should kind of uh, speaks, speak volume. And um, so, and here is where also we can understand the first line of assets at risk. So what is the environment? If it's a, co a developer, what's the access of that developer to other projects, to, to what is our uh, capabilities to check the developer logs to see whether or not he you know, added some code in um, GitHub that wasn't really his or, or, uh, or uh, um, approved uh, uh, some uh, PR that wasn't uh, supposed to be approved. And so this is kind of the um, investigative uh, um, incident response that the um, AppSec should be able to perform. Um, okay, so mitigate threat for the first line of assets and then also obviously if you mitigate threats, part of it you usually roll uh, credentials if you need to, so also all of that kind of, um, it's a muscle, you know, that you should practice and know that you can uh, do. Um, apart from that, you know, that's also where all of the um, premeditated kind of uh, incident and responses comes to mind when you, for instance, if you have um, a, a zero trust solution with very low um, 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 short-lived uh, uh, tokens, then you can say, okay, if the token was compromised, it is no longer valid. I don't need to rotate manually, but I know that I just need to uh, make sure that the single user um, um, was, in, uh, was using the uh, zero trust solution. So, um, Digital forensics, uh, um, again, this is uh, where we want to see if there's any kind of uh, lateral movement, application-based lateral movement. Um, so, again, uh, you don't want to do all of these kind of uh, uh, thinking while you're under pressure, while you're thinking uh, is the attacker is uh, uh, currently um, checking out my internals. Uh, uh, you want to be kind of well prepared before the the matter. Um, okay, why it's sometimes also uh, hard to investigate? For instance, this is from the NPM JS. So this is the uh, uh, documentation for unpublishing. So packages published. So basically, uh, uh, sometimes you 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 want to investigate the code that was run inside your uh, environments, but you might not be able to. Why? Because the official um, repository did not uh, um, allow, allowed the attacker to remove the package, to unpublish it. Um, so, again, this goes to kind of uh, incident response thinking of do I have the code or don't I have the code? If I don't have, I need to uh, presume everything, like the worst that happened. And if not, uh, um, I might can, I can also think of other ways to cache my uh, use the NPM or, or use uh, a different service or have some kind of uh, um, um, capability to investigate if I need to. And also, um, what is very important is that there's like this uh, rush hour uh, effect. So whenever a supply chain attacks, think of uh, Log4j for instance, um, one, it's one too many, so uh, there's a rush and, and there's a surge in the uh, need for AppSec professionals, so a lot of um, organizations who have uh, uh, security on retainer, you would say, or like have their own kind of uh, security um, uh, team that is uh, on call, uh, they might find themselves, you know, uh, uh, within the queue for uh, reaching their professional because a lot of people are uh, searching for advices. So uh, this is just part of the nature of supply chain attacks when you uh, there is like this surge and rush and a lot of the time like the, the your resources might not be available for you uh, if we're talking about uh, um, any external resource. So this is why it's also very important to kind of know the basics of where you uh, want to start to go, build some kind of a list 
as an IR plan for uh, most um, of the big uh, um, um, risks. Um, <clears throat> and then you, you don't find yourself, you know, uh, with no uh, kind of clear way of what to do. Um, also, I mentioned it before, uh, um, that a bridge cannot get fixed by an update. So again, you have to understand if it's a vulnerability, you can fix uh, uh, by update if you don't have any uh, other um, signals or, or uh, indication of something more than just having some vulnerability, that's okay. But uh, uh, when we're talking about some indication of a malicious code running within uh, some organizational uh, environment, um, it's not enough. It, it, it should be uh, dealt and uh, considered a breach, and you should uh, check all of the appropriate kind of measures in order that uh, uh, um, you don't uh, uh, you took care of the potential breach. Again, if you are quick to change credentials, then most likely there's nothing to it. But if not, then you might find yourself in a problem much later. Um, okay, a bit about my predictions. Um, <clears throat> so again, I talked about OWASP top 10 in the following years. I'm sure that supply chain um, will uh, be a considerate risks uh, that mentions by mentioned by the, the top 10 risks um, also there are uh, we already see uh, new ways to attack applications and pipelines and attack uh, and uh, target developers um, there are a lot of uh, incident uh, a lot of very interesting incidents um, and lots of blog posts I'm sure you've seen uh, some of them about how uh, um, it's kind of a developer's um, social engineering into uh, uh, installing your uh, dependency. It can be uh, by um, um, campaigns over TikTok, and it could be by uh, unblocking uh, um, filters kind of uh, um, campaigns so very very uh, arti like uh, interesting uh, uh, ways um, and we are also going to see public pa packages uh, try to add uh, more security controls it's just that their reputation on the line where there was an incident a few months or, uh, back um, where someone continuously uh, wrote a lot of uh, packages into NPM JS, and because of lack of security controls, that caused uh, denial of service and, and flaky um, and service for the entire NPM community. And that's you know organizations who are dependent on NPM JS to perform builds. That's uh, uh, that's like very very bad. Um, so I'm sure. <clears throat> that uh, it's a it's a growing uh, problem for package managers. Um, we're also going to see more uh, um, uh, um, commercial solution and open source solution for supply chain security controls. We already see it, like um, different um, um, different uh, uh, many different kind of uh, tools are emerging and a lot of uh, also commercial solutions uh, to fit this problem of uh, of ongoing. Um, continuous uh, bill of materials along with risks analysis and um, also we're going to probably see increasing regulation for supply chain risks um, here's a, a, a bit uh, just uh, lastly a taste uh, of uh, the we, we finished this uh, research and thinking of, of where uh, to go next so we thought about IDE um, kind of uh, um, plugins as the next uh, example of um, targeting developers uh, code and the application and we saw and we, and we tried to take a lot of the um, things that we already know happening within um, supply chain and other supply chain attacks like I mentioned in NPM and others keep uh, and you know you name it uh, and try to take those into uh, plugins and see how how, we, how easy it is. So, for instance, we created a, um, 
educational um, uh, Visual Studio VS Code plugin. Um, it was fairly easy. Uh, we we man we managed to give it uh, like a high review to show um, within the um, quick view and uh, uh, open view. We also was, were able to um, use a technique called uh, star jacking to um, uh, to kind of uh, spoof our. Uh, project as if it's some, someone else's uh, project which is highly maintained for well, this uh, instance I just took some um, something that was uh, um, quite maintained and with uh, a lot of issues and requests and so on so it uh, took the data and we were able to uh, um, get the verified um, <coughs> the verified uh, uh, icon next to uh, basically whichever domain that you um, control um, and so we, we saw this you know as another example of how uh, um, where we, we might expect to see next uh, um, malicious actors trying to fool uh, you know, developers uh, um, and hack into the application um, so a bit of uh, uh, takeaways so I think IR plan can be very basic and minimal and still have a lot of effect. Um, um, the, it's just critical, it's, it's just a, sometimes a matter of time and you don't want to be, um, again, you don't want to be like uh, uh, thinking about all, this, all the logs that you need and you don't have the critical moment that you want it. You want to think about, you want to premeditate and be ready for it. Um, <clears throat> and since it's like such a biggest going attack surface and since uh, you might, once you uh, want to get uh, some assistance, you might not be able to have the resources because of the nature of um, like the rush uh, uh, of, uh, or surge in uh, need of uh, security. Um, I think it's, uh, it's pretty uh, important to do it. Um, And I, I've put down an example. This is also uh, all of this talk is man, is uh, kind of a mesh of two different uh, articles that uh, I, that I published. Uh, I think that this will be available as part of the presentation, uh, as part of the slides that will be um, available. So this is an example uh, from uh, um, that uh, one of those articles. Um, of a basic uh, IR plan, and again, the important thing is for is for instance to differentiate non-targeted and targeted attacks. Why? Because targeted attack, uh, like a dependency confusion, um, is more likely to be quickly um, uh, um, exploited and and used by an attacker because it's so because it's more uh, dedicated rather than uh, non-targeted um, like a malicious um, well-known um, um, dependency which in that case would be a lot more uh, you'll have more kind of time to uh, react right to um, to response um, <clears throat> because just like you, uh, uh, on one side, the attacker on the other side has a lot of uh, credentials to go through and uh, um, decide who pick on the uh, lucrative uh, victims and so on. So, um, so here is an example for uh, uh, checking CI logs for the specific usage of the malicious package. So this is something that you, know, you want to know that you can do. Uh, identify assets uh, which the malicious code gains access does that environment has access to DB? Is it test environment? Is it production environment? It, you know, what are the limitations of uh, networking uh, of RCI? And so on to understand uh, which um, credentials I need to maybe rotate. Um, identify all possible compromised credentials and rotate credentials uh, in relevant environments. Identify the developers that are uh, um, who have committed a malicious package, 
right? That's also something that we, a lot of the time, uh, don't investigate and, and don't follow up on. The, uh, you, the developer who has, um, who has committed the, the vulnerable package m most probably ran the, uh, the malicious code on his uh, workstation. So we should uh, go and check that. Um, and so on, you know, notifying uh, whoever needs to be notified and, uh, and auditing and keep going. So um, um, I, I, give, I gave a few more uh, general uh, um, takeaway. So um, rely as little as possible on R&D. Again, this is uh, something that I've just seen that in terms of uh, CI, um, security tends to kind of follow R&D, which is not, um, I don't think that's the, they should be able to generate value. Um, <clears throat> effective incident response require some IR plan, so uh, be sure to uh, prepare one. Um, AppSec teams should verify access to relevant logs for triage. Um, SBOM is important, but provides partial image. So you should be able to know and spot your blind, uh, uh, know your blind spots and uh, know where you should kind of, um, might be needing more attention, what kinds of artifacts and so on. And SCA tools might miss some data and they rely, as they rely on SBOM, usually SBOM uh, is, the, um, is the kind of uh, initial process for creating, a, a, for SCA reports checking if anything on that SBOM uh, fits a vulnerable uh, package. And so that's also, uh, you should take under, like if something is, you know, that is missed from SBOM, then most likely it will be missed from SCA reports. Um, that's it, thank you. If you have any questions uh, and it's possible, um, I'd love to hear it. And thank you for your time.